live. All right, everybody, we're gonna mute ourselves if possible. Mute yourselves, thank you so much. Um, we are, welcome to Homemade with Temple Gates of Prayer, week 30, um, which is very exciting. Um, this week we are learning how to, it's May. May is dairy month for Shavuot. So we are learning how to make Susan Monheit's mac and cheese. Uh, and she's going to teach us how to do that with her wonderful, beautiful assistant, her daughter, Jen. So, so Susan, you are up. Oh, okay. I need you to spray it. All right. Hi, everybody. Okay. Let me preface this by saying that this is extremely fattening and a cardiac arrest dish. So, um, the first thing you need to do, I don't know if anybody's gonna be making it, but you need to boil water, obviously, for the pasta. Is it boiling? Not anymore. Not anymore? Turns it up. Okay. I use, um, I use elbows. One time I made it with uh, Mickey Mouse pasta. The kids loved it. I mean, you could use any kind of pasta you want. It really doesn't matter. Uh, tonight I'm using Ronzoni elbows because after speaking with um, Dina, elbows is like the way to go. <laughs> Gotta zoom in. <laughs> so elbows is the way to go. Um, you, but basically you can use any pasta you want. There's no, it's, there's no law to this. Uh, I adapted this from a recipe I think from my Aunt Beulah, may she rest in peace, because she was very big on mac and cheese. Um, and as I was saying earlier, you're supposed to use milk in mac and cheese, and I don't. I use a creamer, and it makes it like a soup, kind of, because I use a lot of the creamer and a lot of the uh, cheese, a lot of cheese. And if you let it sit for a while, once we're all done, You'll see what I mean. It comes out like a soup, but after it sits for a little bit, it solidifies. And then you get your mac and cheese. Once the reason, all right, obviously Jennifer is here to help me out tremendously because once you strain your pasta, it's you, the, you're very quick after that. You're quick. You strain the pasta. You pour it back in the pot that you were using, and then you have to add, uh, yeah, <laughs> you have to add, uh, well, I feel like we're having Costello here. You have to add uh, the cheese and the cream and stirring it and stirring it and stirring it. Uh, uh, Sue, so Sue, can I ask a question? You, no. don't use, you don't use like a butter or a margarine or anything like that? Nope. Right. Nope. And I found out the hard way. The first time I did this, uh, I didn't put anything in the pan. You pour, you pour your pasta back in the pan. Then you quickly, because the, the stove is on and it's hot, you quickly pour in the cream. And you pour in enough just so it covers the entire amount of pasta. So it's like floating. So there are times you won't even use the whole bottle but it depends how much pasta that you use. Then mm -hmm. while it's getting hot and going to boil, that's when you rip up the cheese and throw it in. And you have to keep stirring it because if you don't, because you're using cream, it solidifies and it burns. So what will happen at the base of the, the bottom of the pot you will get black cheese, it'll burn. So in order to prevent that from happening, you have to keep stirring it, keep going, keep turning it over and over and over and over and over. Once all the cheese is melted and it's mixed in completely, then you pour it out. You pour it into your bowl and you let it sit for about, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, about 10 minutes. It, becomes, it solidifies, it comes together, and then the cheese start getting a little harder. 
because it's not on the it's not on the flame. And then you serve it, and it's like it's like a mac and cheese soup at the at the uh, the, the onset of it. But once you've taken it off the stove, it's no more soup. And then what I found out was I don't know how many of you make mac and cheese at home. Do you always notice that on the second day when you reheat it, it's very, very dry. And you usually have to add something to it because it's so dry. Well, when you use the cream, it doesn't get dry. Jennifer or Michael would take out mac and cheese and put it in the microwave and it would heat it up. And then there's so much cheese or cream in it, it would soften it all up. You don't have to add you don't have to add anything. So it's perfect for leftovers as well. Boiling? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Okay. It's on high now. It's starting, but it's not oh, okay. bubble. All right. So the reason why I'm giving you this like preamble to the recipe is that once we get started then there won't be very much talking unless you have questions because then we have to keep moving along because we always do it together, okay. Jennifer and I. And then this okay. way, it'll, it won't burn the bottom. So does anyone have any questions mm -hmm. now? No, How many of you think I'm that can keep the milk? Yeah. I have a question. Um, <clears throat> you, you use American cheese? Yes. You, you, I've seen mac and cheese with like a few different oh, kinds of cheeses, or you just use the one cheese? Just the one cheese. Just the one cheese, okay. Just the one cheese, because that's what my kids like. Okay. But if Fair. you want to use, I didn't know this, Jennifer likes cheddar. She mm -hmm. likes a whole variety of cheeses. So you know right. what, you could have tried it with a different cheese then. I'm not picky. I'm okay. saying even two cheeses, like yeah. both of them. Yeah, like, like yeah. American mm -hmm. and something else. Yeah, there's no reason know. why you can't substitute the cheese. And if you're going to substitute the the coffee mate, mm -hmm. I would substitute yeah. it with, a, with cream. cream. I mean, if you really want to go crazy, uh, I think at the synagogue, we once had actual containers of actual cream. Mm. And it was so thick. I mean, if you want to use that, that's just up to preference and what your kids will eat or what you'll eat. I mean, okay. after my kids threw out the first batch, I knew I had to do something. <laughs> so, okay. so that's what you can substitute with if you'd like. Yeah. Get on mute. Okay. All right, I'm gonna cut the cheese. Wish we had, you could show them that video now. Alan, uh, uh, Sue, Alan would like to know if you use salt and pepper. Yes, no pepper. Just no salt. Pepper. Just salt. Um, we're bubbling. We're bubbling? Okay. I, when I, um, anytime I'm in pasta, I always put salt in the water. So this way the pasta doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. But my mother always okay. taught me, you only, you can always add, you never can take away. So I taught that to Jennifer, yeah. even with our matzo bride. You can always add, but you can never take it away. One time I had put in too much. I had to throw the whole thing in the garbage. So now I just put a little sprinkle in there. And if we have to add, we add. Do you ever add that salt to the mac and cheese? Don't do it. Yeah. Do you ever get salt to the mac and cheese? Sometimes. Sometimes. So it's a hit and miss type thing. But I don't use pepper. We're, Ellen, we're not a big pepper family. We're spicy, but we're not peppery. We, well, I think we use pepper because we don't use that much salt. And, you know, you like to season something up. So I would say we use pepper more than we use salt. But all right, nice. I got it. And I'm sure, I know this is true. After the pasta is cooked, you're going to drain the pasta. Then you put the pasta back, right? Right, right. You'll see that we already have the colander in the sink. Um, because, as you know, I'm not allowed to lift more than five pounds. So Jennifer, once it's done, Jennifer right now is stirring the pasta. It's in the hot water. Oh, that's a very important point. Um, you want to make sure that when you cook the pasta, that it's not mushy. 
because you want to make sure, Jennifer always tries it, make sure that it's a little bit chewy. Reason being is if you remember, you're going to strain the pasta and then you're going to put the pasta back in the pot and cook it with the cheese and the cream. So if it starts out mushy, it's going to be the mac and cheese mm -hmm. will not be good. It'll be just blah and fall apart. So I think it's called, uh, Dina, it's called al dente, right? Al dente. Where it's chewy. Al dente. Al dente. Al dente. Al dente. So you want to make sure, I mean, I always called in Jennifer to try it before I would strain it. Because yep. if it was chewy, then we would go. But you don't want it crunchy, obviously. But you definitely don't want it mushy. Remember I showed you I was gonna, when I do it, I'm gonna make it a brown rice pasta. So look what it says. Can everybody see? It says, not mushy al dente. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's gonna be my experiment tomorrow. I swear I had nothing to do with that package. <laughs> when I cook my pasta, I just add a little bit of olive oil or just oil so that the, um, Elbows doesn't stick together. Just a oh. little, little spoon. So the olive oil does that? Yeah. That's a good idea. I never thought of doing that. We're good? I love, I love when, when we get little tips. That's good. Good tip. It'll cook fast with this new stove. Yeah, I always thought the salt was just to make it tasty. I never heard that it's not to make it stick. I'm with Lana. I always put a little oil not to make it stick. My mother taught me that because uh, ever since I've been using the salt, it doesn't stick to the bottom. And the salt actually the raises the boiling point, so it boils right. at a higher temperature. Right. That's, that's why I, I, I that's the reason why you, I thought you put right. salt. Right. It's salt actually water water when, I, yeah. when I put salt in, that white stuff comes out, so I have to take it out with a sponge, you know, a little thing to take. Um, because the salty the water starch. out because it starts boiling in the, the whitey it mass. The starch yeah, I leave it in. It, I, it goes out. away. Okay, that's that's starch, away. right? Yeah. Yeah. Starch, starch, yeah. 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 But you know, the chef Alex, what's her name? Guana Shelly. Yeah. She doesn't like putting oil in her pasta because then the sauce doesn't stick to the pasta. Who's that? That's if you're Alex, seen a that chef, chef named uh, as a, uh, this female chef. Her name's Alex Guarnaschelli. Guarnaschelli is correct. Yes. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> yeah, that's not only if all. you're gonna put the sauce with the pasta. If you're gonna leave it separate or you're gonna eat it later, Lana's right. It doesn't stick. But either if you add the salt, it doesn't either, and it helps right. it cook faster and gives the pasta flavor. Otherwise, the pasta has no flavor if you don't salt the water. Oh, oh. oh that's right. Thank you, Lisa. Now, and while the, Ellen, pasta, it, is, while the pasta is cooking for everyone, if you use, some people use shredded cheese. We use American slices. Jennifer now is separating them and is going to rip them up. They melt quicker when it's ripped up. If you put it in whole, it'll take longer to melt. Because if you rip it up, you put it in, then you stir it, it's all through the pasta and it melts faster. So, because remember, we're worried about it burning on the bottom because of the cream. Now, if you put oil in it, I don't know, I've never done it. It probably helps. You think it would help? I wouldn't put oil in for a mac and cheese because the cheese I wouldn't sucks. either. Okay. If you're doing different, like a, a, a tomato-based sauce, then no problem, but not for a cheese sauce. All right. Well, I, we don't put anything in, and that's why we have to do it so quickly. And she's over there now. Wave hello. See, she's over there now separating the cheeses, and then... <laughs> and then um, once we strain the pasta, then the two of us will go to work. And you, we'll show you. Um, how are we going to do this with the iPad, with the uh, laptop? We'll have to, we'll have to somehow um, hold it up so this way they can see what it looks like in the pot. 
because I want them to see. I want you to see that it looks like a soup. Because that's basically what it is because of the cream. Well, I'll hold it while you pour. Okay. That'll work. Because you can pour. Yeah, I can pour. I just can't lift. That's fine. All right. Um, we, and we're starting off with 16 slices of cheese. And, and a whole container of cream. That's a pound of cheese, right? Yes. I see Are you using money. a pound of pasta? A pound of pasta, a pound of cheese, and a 32 ounce bottle of cream. Wow, 32. I thought you were going to use 16. It was 32, right, Jenna? I don't know. I don't think it's a big, it's not the big one. Let me take a look. Let me go take a look. That's like double cream. Yeah, that's why 32 is a lot. That's a lot know, of cream for... I know, she's gonna, I know she's going to laugh at us. Me? How do we make this a little less fat? <laughs> <laughs> you okay, Ellen. Mac and cheese is not dietetic, that's for sure. <laughs> No, Not but Ellen, you could if you used, let's say, reduced fat cheese, and True. instead of a full uh, creamer, they make light creamers. All right. All so, right. I mean, it's That's not okay. like super dietetic, but at least but it could be better. It could it be. It could be better. better. Or okay. if you took out, I mean, like, I'm trying to think. Maybe the almond milk would be less than a creamer and still give the creamy. You know, they also make an almond milk. Yeah, she got 32 ounces there, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, my God. They make a white yeah. almond milk creamer, right. Right. But do you so want the like, um, lower sugars or no sugar? That's sugar's what I would milk? make. Yeah. Yeah. Because this this macaroni and cheese would kill would, would be my numbers for the entire week over. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's what Jenny's that's what Jennifer said about Jenny Craig. Oh my god. It is. It's very fattening. I mean oh, just so the cream alone. <sighs> um, it's only, it's only on Thanksgiving. Yeah that's why I only make it once a year. One tablespoon is 20 calories. Well, that's not too bad. Yeah but how much is the whole container? How many, how many tablespoons are in 30 ounces? Anyone know? That much of a mathematician, I'm not. 32 ounces is four cups. Oh, wait a minute. Look, there are 63 servings in this container. Oh, my God. And that's 20 calories per serving? 20. 1,260 well, calories. That's over 1,260 calories. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, but how many calories. servings? How many servings is the mac and cheese? Uh, well, uh, yeah, the pasta. Hold on. This it's is the pound of pasta. Nobody will And how many it. times are you going to eat from that is the question. Got to divide it between, between how many times you're going to eat it. Nobody's going to admit to that, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There are eight servings in a one pound, and it's 200 calories a serving. Wow. So that's 1,600. So in my house, that makes it four servings, not eight. Okay. It's ready. If it's eight servings in my house, it's four. All right, here we go. Is the creamer open? Uh, no, I'll open the creamer now. Hold on. See, now we got to work fast. Let's see how you soft the bun a little bit. Say hi to soft the bun a little bit. <laughs> 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 ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right, so now what we're doing here, Jennifer is going to take the pasta and strain it, obviously. And you don't have to worry about it. None of it, not all of it comes out because you're putting it right back in the bowl. But make sure all the water's out. All right, here we go. And they say, oh yeah, they can see. Yeah, they can see. Not yet. Hold up, hold up. You want to wait until the pop, you want to wait until it's hot. All right. Um, let me just sip it in a little bit more here. It is the whole bottle, yeah. 
I think you know why the last time we had the big one because you were drinking coffee still. Yeah. All right, that's it. Now, um, can you bring that over and just show them? Yeah. <clears throat> I just want you to see, we poured in the whole thing of, of uh, yeah, put it over the, on top of the. See, it's completely covered and submerged in the cream. You stir, and then I'll... Well, no, you want to wait. All right, now it's completely submerged. The pasta is completely submerged. You want to wait until it starts to boil. And then this way, the, the um, cheese will melt quickly. Thank God the cleaning lady's coming tomorrow. I'm making a mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, waiting for it to boil. Are big, huh? huh? You never use those big noodles. I know the noodle. They're supposed to be elbows. Why are they so big? Because the box you got said large elbows, not regular elbows. Oh, is that why? That would require us looking at the box. Yeah. Well, we, we were in kind of a hurry because we went shopping after the doctor, and I didn't. I was just pulling things off the shelf. I think it'll be all right. What do you think? So it, so the cream is up to the top of the pasta. Right. Okay. It's starting to bubble. I'm getting almond milk cream. Or... Well, that's what Jennifer <laughs> drinks. Jennifer drinks almond milk. But I don't know how that's going to be in the... Uh... It should cook like a cream. It should? Yeah, it has the same texture and consistency of, of milk. Susan. What if you saved some of the pasta water and when you poured the noodles back into the pot, you added the pasta water just so the bottom wouldn't burn and you wouldn't have to be as crazy getting it all together so fast? Does that make sense? <laughs> what? Because that would make sense. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this way. Did you hear what she said? Yeah, I heard. Well, I'm just thinking because, you know, when they, when you watch all the cooking shows, they always say save the pasta water because it makes the sauce and, and whatever you're adding to the pasta kind of men, meld it together. Oh. So I'm thinking if you put it in, in a hot pot and you leave some of the pasta water, you're making it soupy anyway. It, just a little bit. I'm not, you know, I think it might help and then you don't have to be so frantic. Well, that's what we are like, thank God I only do this once a week. I do it on Thanksgiving. All right, Jennifer, it's boiling. <laughs> now you put in all the cheese and now you have to watch. Go ahead, throw. There it is. It's boiling. Go, 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 go. Could you bake this? I never did. I don't know. What do you ladies think? Like after you mixed it together, could you put it like in a pan with a little bit of, let's say, breadcrumbs on top and mm -hmm. bake it? I was thinking that. That's how we make it. That's, That's how, how we I make it. Bread I was going to ask about that because a lot of mac and cheese does have breadcrumbs on top. Yeah. Yeah. My grandmother we always used it. to do that. Right. My Actually, grandmother used to call it baked macaroni and cheese. Yes. Oh. Yes. We make a mac. We make a. I'm adding a few more calories to our cement. Ellen. You're going to go we, big, go all the way. We oh, actually God. make. We actually make a macaroni and cheese that's a skinny taste recipe that has broccoli in it. That's really good. It's like real macaroni and cheese, but it's light and it has I actually, broccoli. I just saw broccoli in my fridge and I said, you know, to make it a little healthier, I would have thrown in a little broccoli to suck up 
Allison okay. makes it all the time. And it's a big maybe, one with the little breadcrumbs. Maybe you could do half broccoli and half noodles. But the noodles are not really the most fattening part. It's no, really it's the, the cheese. cheese and the cream in the there and, and the creamer. Yeah. yeah. Right. Let me see what let yeah. me see what, what's in that one. <laughs> the Alan's but Alan, if, but if you use reduced fat cheese and Correct. and you substituted out, I mean, the creamer must make it amazing. But if you mm -hmm. substituted, let's say, skim milk or reduced fat milk which you could still... even use you could even use fat free half and half right right good. but i want right. it to be dairy free everybody don't forget oh, so no, then I, know. Do almond then I, milk. Do... I would do almond milk original almond milk 30 calorie oh, and then use the whole not even the creamer just the the 30 calorie almond milk yep i would try that yeah but you may want to adjust the recipe because it may not be creamy enough because there's other things in the creamer Correct. Right. Right. What else yeah. than creamer? Unless you use like half cream or half milk, you know, almond base, both. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I don't know if they have a reduced calorie or lower sugar almond milk creamer. I know that as, as a person that doesn't drink coffee, I have ne seriously, I've never had creamer in my house. You what's the difference? Chocolate. What? Oh, you do? You well, what's the too. difference between a creamer and milk? God, she's coming cream is thicker cream and it has sugar. other thicker. ingredients in it. Sugar generally. Or right. some kind of sweetener, right. not always. Mm -hmm. Cream is so, much thicker as well. So it's interesting. This macaroni and cheese that like we we make sometimes. This is how they say they line it up, Alan. They use wait. I just saw it. There were four things they did. One yeah. second, let me find we it. We do reduce, reduce the on, butter Robin, amount. Robin, Robin, just wait because they're showing us what it looks okay. like. It's in the soup state. You see now it looks like a soup. Did everyone see? Yep. Yeah, it looks like a soup. And the reason why we let it sit a little bit, keep stirring. So we want to cook away some of that coffee mate because you don't want to have mac and cheese soup. So the coffee mate is sweet and it also adds to the mac and cheese. So now you have not only the cheese flavor, but the sweet flavor from the coffee mate. And we're letting it cook. Yeah, look now. Oh, now it looks gorgeous. Did you use white American cheese? No. Yellow. That was yellow? Yeah. Well, you can really use any cheese. It just depends on what you prefer. I just prefer American yellow is my favorite cheese. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't eat it. This is all... This is, my, this is my dinner for the next three nights. <laughs> Why can't yeah. you can freeze it? I don't know. Can you freeze it? Can I ask it? Yes. Once it's cooked, you can freeze it. Oh, wow. I think so. Judy, yeah. Judy you're doing it now, right? You're yeah. It now? So you're using a block of American cheese? Actually, no. I use Kavar. Uh, all I have here is Kavarti and Briere. Oh, so I use the nice. like Havarti. That sounds yummy. That is yummy. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's but not burning or anything. Oh, I just I can't raise it. To, you, I want them to I have to wait for it to boil, right? Where it was and where it is now. Yeah. You can yeah. see it on the pot. Keep spinning it. Keep turning it, Judy. Can you show them that? I can show them after I pour it out. No, 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 no. I want them to see how much. The cream has burned off. Oh, got it. So you take the iPad, you take the laptop. And now, I want you to see, do you see? I don't know if you can see it. Do you see the top level where the creamer was? Yeah. And where it is now, how it's burned off? All right. Okay. Were you able to see that? Yes. Yeah. All right, it's just about done, Jenna. What do you think? I think it's done. All right, where's the, um, we moved it, it's right there. I'm turning this off. All right, I want you to pour it in front of it. It's like a sauna in here. I know, it's very warm. And you have the AC, what, on 74? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, most of it is cooked off. Oh, it's perfect. It looks good. All right. Oh, they can still see you, so go ahead and pour. 
And then when we're done, we'll show them a picture when it's done. <laughs> now, you never ever scrape from the bottom. You just pour it out. Done? No, not at all. Not at all. We did good. All right, here, you want the spoon? Oh, I have to get a bowl. Look at that. After all that, I only lost three, four noodles. All right. See, there's the bottom. Now, you see at the center, um, I'm cooking on an electric stove, which I'm not allowed to curse because we're taping. I hate it. I absolutely hate it, but they don't have gas stoves in Florida. So you can see from the pot, how the middle cooks first as opposed to the outside. So we have to be extra careful for that reason. So that would mean, Ellen, you'd also have to be extra careful because you have one too, right? Exactly, exactly. It, there is different, there's a big difference between cooking with an electric versus ah, Yeah. I hate it. It is different. No, no, no. Put the one in and let it sit. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to scrape it off. Okay. So, um, yeah, and cooking with an electric stove, it's like night and day on cooking on a gas stove. Night and day. Um, and it took me forever to learn how to do it. But for whatever the reason is, I think gas stoves have wires that go underground, I believe. And you can't do that in Florida because yeah, we, don't we don't have basements. We're all on swamps. There's nothing solid underneath us. In fact, remember that house that we were going to buy? Yeah. They had a gas stove and the, the tank to give you the gas to use the gas stove was on the adjacent to the house. It was above ground. And that was, a, that was a big deterrent to buying that house because I don't need a huge tank, gas tank at, the, at my house, especially since we are the lightning capital of the world. I mean, the lightning that just comes up in this place is, is scary. So we, I have to learn how to cook with electric and it's, it's absolutely horrendous, absolutely. Well, that just means you should move back to New York where you have your gas stove. I'm ready. I'm re you ready? <laughs> We're ready. All right, so everybody, so you put it in a Tupperware container. I was watching what you did. But like everybody was talking about it, you could have put it in a tin, like a, an eight by 10 tin. Right. And sprinkle and then sprinkle breadcrumbs on top, stick it in the oven and it would probably get less soupy. Right? It would probably be yeah. very good. Yeah. Think about that. Right. Thank yeah. you. Putting it in the oven. Try that once? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you all heard the master talk. <laughs> all right. I'm a woman of routine. You want to try it and see? It's hot still. You got to let it sit for a second. Yeah. Well, here, take the. Um, show them how it's yeah, starting Show to them how it's starting to. Wait, hold on. See how it's not as soupy now? Because now it's starting to cool off. You see what's happening? Not as... Not eating it, believe me. If you look, it's what's happening. I don't know if it's because of the cream or what, but now, now if we mix it, you don't see as much cream, do you? I mean, there's 32 ounces yeah. of hot bottle that's in that thing. And now... What you have is your mac and cheese, normal mac and cheese. It smells good, but I, I don't like mac and cheese, but it smells good. I don't like mac and cheese. Okay, so that's it, my, my, my sisters. So any other questions? No. Nope. I don't think so. If anybody tries it, let me know. Let me know how it goes. If you have any questions. I will. Okay. I will. Judy, I how's it going? I just put the cheese in. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
B uh, night. Well, yes. I know you want me to make it for you when I get to New York. You told yeah, me. Yeah, I might reconsider that just because of when how are you fat coming, it is. Susan? <laughs> Why are you going to? When are you coming, Susan? Oh, I'm when coming. are you coming? June eighth to August fourth. Oh, Eight cool! Weeks. The whole summer. Eight right weeks. around the corner. Yeah, can't wait. Mm -hmm. It's already too hot here. It was ninety-one degrees today. I. Oh, nice. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> Okay, Nina, why so I'm gonna make it for you. What happened? Well, just just let's let's finish the recording and we'll have a we could chit chat after. Oh, so <laughs> um, I just excuse me, Susan. Yes. So I let it come to a boil with the cheese. I let it come to a boil again. Yes. And then I turn the heat down. Yes, but you have to keep stirring it so it doesn't I'm stick stirring, to the bottom. I'm stirring. You don't I'm want stirring. it to the bottom because it'll burn. No, it's All not right. burning. Well, thank you, Susan, for teaching. Next week, we are off because it's Mother's Day. So ladies, enjoy your day. Yeah. Um, for those of you who are mothers, mothers, for those day. of us who aren't, do something fun for yourself anyway. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, that's, and then in two weeks, we're back on May 15th or 16th, whatever that Sunday is. Um, I just don't remember the date specifically. Um, we're going to be on at three o'clock because it's Arab Shavuot that night. And we're going to be learning how to make blintzes, cheese blintzes with Esther Dubau, who was my friend who did it a couple weeks ago. So, all right, now I'm going to stop recording and I'm going to take us off Facebook. <laughs>